all of our main players know about zombies and the audience has learned that there's more zombies in Seattle than we thought and they are pretty organized and have a military background and perhaps that's something we should be concerned about. In season three uh, we meet Fillmore Graves, this, uh, this uh, military contractor comprised of zombies and uh, and what they say they want to do is to prepare for the day when zombies are discovered and when they think there will be that humans will try to hunt them and uh, eliminate them and they are preparing for that day and they're asking Liv which side are you on? It's kind of interesting the rug has been pulled out under Liv a little. I think she had her finger on the pulse or she thought she did about who the zombies were and what, what zombies were about and where they'd come from and everything. She was she thought she was like at the forefront and now she's found out about Fillmore Graves which seems to be this kind of whole other enterprise. So it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting one for her. I think she's got the support of her friends now like everybody knows so it's a bit more sort of Scooby Gang like the, the band are all together working on it but I, I think it's it's definitely an uncertain time for her. We need to contain um, or obliterate and get rid of what he saw. These zombies cannot enter the world that he lives in. And so I think that's, that becomes his mission. The newest episode picks up literally minutes from where we left off last season, which is really awesome. Um, and uh, you're kind of going to see what what's going to happen with the, the world knowing about zombies and, and, you know, that they actually exist and they're a real thing. Um, and kind of the moral dilemma that it puts Liv and the rest of us in, if we actually are going to support this and actually be for it or hide it from humans. You know, Blaine proved to be a pretty uh, badass individual uh, last season, something I didn't even know Blaine had the capability of doing. Uh, he always had hired henchmen to do that kind of stuff for him. There's, you know, there's going to be a, a love triangle between between Blaine, Peyton, and uh, Robbie and uh, yeah, I'm just interested to see how that plays out. I think a lot of fans are pro Ravi Payton, which I kind of am too. I think it's that Ross, Rachel, like, will they ever get together? Um, but I think it's also really fun playing the Blaine aspect, just because he's such a um, like a dark horse for Payton to be attracted to. I think that she is a very like sensible person and knows better than to get involved with a bad guy, but she just for some reason can't can't help herself with him. I, I, people do want Ravi and Peyton to get together ultimately, um, but, but that's why you throw a bad guy into the works, right? You, it can't be easy. Nothing's ever easy, and happy relationships are, make for crappy TV, right? So um, it's great that it's David Anders, so it gives us an excuse to work with, with David a lot more. Um, but I, I, I think a lot of people are team uh, Peyton and Ravi, and, and that's awesome. They love Blaine. I mean, they love Ravi. Ravi and, and Peyton more. I don't know what they call it. Rayton? Yeah. Pavi, I think they call it Pavi. But uh, yeah, I like, I like, I want to bring the pain. When you listen to the scripts, even with the involvement,